Welcome, everybody. We'll give everybody just a couple of minutes to join and, and settle in. And while we wait, we would love to hear where everyone is joining from. So in the chat box, please let us know what city or location you're currently in. We have Burlington, great, pretty local. Toronto, Barrie, Toronto, Vaughan, wonderful. Ottawa, great. I hope you have some nice weather in Ottawa. Netherlands, thank you for joining. I think it's a little bit later. It's about 12 noon in uh, Canada, so I'm sure uh, it's almost uh, dinner time in the Netherlands. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for letting us know where you're joining from. Um, it's great to have you join this session. Ah, six o'clock, yes, in the Netherlands. Well, let me officially welcome everybody to the info session on the new service design certificate program at the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies. I am Kelly Heggie, and I'm a program director at the school and um, look after the service design program. As we get started, I want to mention that this webinar is being recorded and it will be made available to all participants probably early next week. As well, if you have any questions throughout the session, please note them in the chat box and we'll have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. With that, I would like to start the session with the U of T land acknowledgement. We wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this island, on this land. So before we discuss service design, I'd like to just share some brief information about the School of Continuing Studies. The school's vision is to be recognized as a trusted global leader in lifelong learning, which continually looks to create access to, to new dynamic pathways for personal growth across communities. We have over 800 courses in areas of business and professional studies and arts and humanities. So we have a course for everyone for those looking to take a course to help their career, for those to take a course for personal interest. We deliver these courses online and also some uh, are, are also in person. All right, to start the discussion on the emerging discipline of service design, I'd like to introduce our, introduce our guest speaker today, Kari Ojanen. Kari is a seasoned, seasoned, excuse me, a seasoned design leader with 25 years of experience and international experience having worked in Europe, the Middle East, and North America. Today, he brings his wealth of knowledge to his role as a design coach at one of the largest insurance, financial services, and wealth management companies globally. Kari also shares his expertise as an instructor at the University of Toronto School of Continuing Study, where he teaches user experience and service design. So Kari, I'd like to invite you to the screen and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Kelly, and thank you everybody for joining today. It's wonderful to see you here. I really look forward to uh, taking you uh, through some slides here and and uh, I will do a little bit of back and forth with Kelly. Uh, she'll step in again. And then just as it says in the chat, which you would, should be able to see in front of you, um, you can put your questions there. And I do definitely encourage you to ask any questions, there's no silly questions, there's no bad questions, all questions are good. So any kind of questions that you have about the program, whether they'd be about the content or methods you'll learn or technical questions, anything at all, please ask uh, those questions. We also have a couple of really quick and simple polls set up for you. And I'd actually like to get the first poll up already now. Um, and uh, and uh, hopefully you can all um, uh, answer those polls as well, and I'll, I'll see what results we get, and that will help me also to take you through the content here. So uh, let me uh, move forward then uh, into the content. So first thing to address here, what is service design? Well, I want to break it down. 
uh, services are products of economic activity that you can't drop on your foot. And that's according to the Economist newspaper. And I like that definition. I think it's a good one. But my favorite definition is from Lou Downs' book called Good Services. A service is something that helps someone to do something. Pretty simple, huh? So if you think of your smartphone, we all have those, right? Uh, you, can't, you, you can certainly drop your smartphone on your foot, and it will probably hurt too. Uh, but then think of the many digital apps that you have on the phone, the things that actually let you do things on the phone, and you can't drop those on your foot. So the phone product itself is a platform for the services that it lets you access that provide value to you. So from service to design then, what is design? Well, design is not just a craft. Although designers are certainly known for producing tangible products like posters, furniture, advertising, clothes, all kinds of things that are designed. But design is about more than just making things look good. Design is about more than just visual appeal. Design is a strategic activity. Design is about creating a plan. And usually that plan aims at making something good with good outcomes. Design aims to look at something, be it a scenario, an experience, a product, or service, and create a plan for how to make it better. So combining those two definitions, service design is about creating great services. Thank you for your answers to the poll. I can see that there's quite a few of you who have at least a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of familiarity with service design already. That's great. Services are certainly everywhere in today's world. They can be found in almost every aspect of our daily lives, from banking to transportation, government services, healthcare, insurance, hospitality, all kinds of things. Uh, services make up the majority of most modern economies, actually, and they're, they, they contribute significantly to the growth and, and the stability of the global economy. And services rely on interactions between people, processes, and technology. So what's the distinction between a service and a product then? Well, when you pay for a service, you're not taking ownership of it like you would with a product. You're essentially buying an experience or a solution to a problem. For example, getting your haircut is a service, right? And once it's done, you can't really return it or, or store it for later. And if you want to cancel a service, you usually have to give notice to the service provider, unlike with a product where you can simply return it. But differentiating between services and goods, products can sometimes be a bit tricky. Uh, if you take a law firm, for example, while a law firm provides legal services, um, those services often result in tangible products such as letters and contracts and all kinds of things. And what about something like meal kit subscriptions? We're probably all familiar with those. While the subscription itself is a service, it also includes physical products uh, for a meal preparation. It's a fine line between services and products then, and sometimes uh, the distinction between the two is quite blurred. But it's important to understand the difference in order to effectively really market and deliver the offerings to customers. It's also possible that from the viewpoint of your organization that you work for, you see the offering as a series of products, really. But from the customer's viewpoint, what about them? It's a service that doesn't start or end where the organization thinks it does. So if you think about bank and how a bank offers products like credit cards and checking accounts and mortgages, savings accounts. Those are all called banking products usually. But the customer, what is the customer looking for? They're looking for financial advice. They're looking for help in decision making. They're looking for connections between the products really. Their goals aren't just to have a credit card or qualify for a mortgage, but to manage their spending and buy a home, for example. So 
Uh, we have a second poll for you now. If we can have that go up, I'm curious to see your responses to that as well. And I'll keep moving with the content here at the same time. So the poll that you'll see is asking you about your familiarity or experience with other related fields. We have user experience design there. We have customer experience design. And then a little bit different to the two first ones, but we have Lean Six Sigma there. And I can see that uh, according to your answers, there are quite a few people here from a UX design background, perhaps. And some people also know a bit about Lean and, and uh, customer experience design. So that's really great. Um, What's the difference then? And why might you want to learn about service design specifically? How is it different from UX design? Um, what more could you sort of learn by delving into service design more deeply? Well, you can think of service design as the broad and UX design as the narrow. And when I say it like that, both are extremely valuable, of course. They're very important in the building of great experiences. But UX design tends to focus on the experience within one touch point or tool at a time, like a mobile app, a website, or it could be the interface that controls an elevator, for example. Often when we talk about UX design, we talk about it in the context of digital uh, design and digital product uh, building. But service design needs to consider the broader journey through multiple touch points and activities and devices and interactions and tools in order to get the customer to their goal. So looking at it through the lens of UX design, there's specific things there that of course need to be usable and useful and, and, and everything. And then service design is really taking that broader view to look at where are we trying to get the customer to, what's their goal, what, what, how can we make them, make them get to that goal in the best possible way um, while connecting all these touch points. So if you've been working as a UX designer, I think that some of you uh, may have and may be UX designers, um, or, or maybe you've been at least a stakeholder in some other function with uh, working with UX designers, you may have sometimes started to feel like the challenges that you would need to address are bigger than the frame within which you're working, the frame that you've been given. That, for example, the usability of the app that you're developing or a website that you're developing is important, of course, and that's something that you get to address. But how will you ensure that the people will find that app or website in the first place? How do they reach out for support if they find a problem with the app? What other channels are there or should be there to offer them services well? What will they do after using that specific touch point? And what about behind the scenes activities um, like IT operations and support staff and uh, how the staff gets incentivized even and trained? Everything that doesn't meet the customer's eye directly but is actually so important uh, to proper uh, to to properly and successfully uh, deliver the service. So service design is about addressing all the different points and channels from the front stage that's in direct customer view to the back. And it's not just about the customer experience; it's also the employee experience. Because if the employees, the staff who are involved in the delivery and supporting the service delivery, um, they won't be able to do their job in the best possible way either. So now coming from your background um, and, and wherever that background may be, a really good thing about service design is that it's an interdisciplinary field. So you don't have to have been a designer before. You don't have to be a designer now. You don't need to have that in your title or you don't need to be able to draw really well um, from from some direct connection with, with designers. But if you have a background in business, operations, or psychology, for instance, then that can be an asset. It may be something that you may be able to pull from when you start learning about service design. Service design is certainly a collaborative and a co-creative process. 
it isn't for anyone who wants to lock themselves in a room to come up with the best design and then bring it back to the team. But what's crucial to good service design process is hearing out all the different perspectives, working with all the different stakeholders, stakeholders including customers and including the internal folks within the organization. Um, if you happen to be a person who you know thinks of yourself as an introvert, more on the introverted side, I'm with you, uh, but please don't get scared. Uh, it's not like as a service designer, you'll need to be out there all the time, putting up a party for everyone else and socializing. Uh, a good thing about service design, the point about service design that is collaborative and co-creative process is that no one person is meant to have all the expertise and the solutions and the ideas. Uh, you will get to learn, uh, pull from and leverage others' knowledge from technology perspective, from a process perspective, from uh, the perspective of, of the business and, uh, and, and get their support in designing and moving forward with the best services. So bringing all the perspectives, all the people together is really what's key um, to um, being and running a successful service design process. Okay, let's talk a little bit about where service design is then and what might further motivate you to take the course, take the program even. So over the past decade, service design has really started to grow in North America and started to grow in Canada. In Europe, for example, service design has been around for a little bit longer already for a couple of decades. But here in Canada, many Canadian organizations from healthcare to banking to insurance, but other places as well, even smaller organizations, startups even, have increasingly started to focus on uh, strategic um, design and, and strategic process and how design approach would be incorporated, integrated within that. So um, it's certainly becoming more prevalent among Canadian firms to have uh, service designers working there or some some aspect of service design at least being pulled in. In fact, a lot of Canadian organizations have started to hire um, and establish in-house service design teams, while there are also many people working as consultants um, and, and providing service design uh, to uh, companies that way. There's telecom, there's finance, there's insurance, there's healthcare, and many, many service designers working in government at municipal here in Toronto, the city of Toronto, uh, or provincial, um, the province of Ontario, the uh, province of BC, uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, even they have service design teams, and then at the federal level. So many, many opportunities for service design, if you want it to focus on service design specifically, but certainly even just as having an understanding of service design, what it does and what it can provide to an organization, what's its value through all the different roles, there's a need for that knowledge. Okay, I think that this is where I pass it back over to Kelly and, and she'll take you through a, a little bit more about the certificate program then in terms of the different courses and the structure of it first. Thank you very much, Kari. That was great information on service design and also uh, some great insights in the market. I do appreciate that. Yes, and now let's now discuss the service design certificate program that is offered through the U of T School of Continuing Studies. The certificate is made up of six micro courses and there are two introductory courses. Uh, one focuses on principles and concepts and the other one on methodologies and tools. It, we do recommend that learners take these two introductory courses before the other four courses. And then the other four courses in the certificate program, uh, one focuses on user experience, another one on developing insights for design, uh, the next one is service design ideation and testing, and finally there's a course on leading in service design. Now, with each of these micro courses, 
Uh, they are offered once a term through instructor-led online learning for over six weeks. Each course requires approximately three hours of learning per week. So each course is then 18 hours in total. With each of the micro courses, you will be eligible for a micro credential, which is a digital badge um, at the completion of the course. This micro credential uh, highlights the specific skills that you learned in the course, and this can be shared in places like on your LinkedIn profile. Once you've taken all six courses, you will then be eligible for the Certificate in Service Design from the U of T School of Continuing Studies. One thing to note is eligible learners may apply to the Ontario Students Assist Assistance Program, also known as OSAP, for these micro courses. Now I'll turn it back to Kari, who's going to speak in a little bit more depth about each of the, the six courses. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, so let's take a look at the intro course first. There's two intro courses. The first one, as the title name of the course suggests, is focused on the principles and concepts, core concepts of service design first so that you can learn the fundamentals about service design and this is for you even if you have a little bit of experience already or you have related experience from ux design perhaps this course in six weeks will really set you up with the right understanding of what is really essential to service design in terms of approach and mindsets and all of that you will also get some good understanding on how service design again differs from user experience design and customer experience design so that you can take that back to your organization too maybe you have those other people there already working but you can now speak better to what the differences are what the added value is you um, get a good lesson on the principles of service design and you get to see what design thinking and service design mean to each other. There's one assignment in this course too that then puts these skills, the lessons that you've learned to test a little bit and uh, gets you to think through the lens of, uh, of, of service design and evaluate existing services. So you get to analyze an existing service that you choose in order to judge its value, its efficacy, based on um, 15 principles of good service design that you learn about in the in the course. There's a little bit there already in this course also about how you might pull others in and how you might introduce, best introduce service design to your colleagues, to your uh, leaders, um, to other teams in your organization so that they can start to understand it as well. And then coming from that first intro course, in the second course, if the first course kind of puts the concepts in front of you and the need for certain things, certain approaches and service design, then the second intro course is going to delve deeper into actual methodologies and tools. So journey mapping, you may be familiar with that idea of mapping out the journey, as we call it in service design, that a end user a customer will have um, coming from their need from the challenge to getting to their goal as well as blueprints blueprints are a really good method of mapping out and visualizing the service delivery process within the organization starting from the current state how things work today from the front to the back through all the different channels and touch points and then you can start to think of now that you learn, now that you know about the current state, and you know where there's maybe challenges, there are opportunities for improvement, there are opportunities for innovation even, then you can start to visualize the vision for the future state. So uh, you get to uh, create those uh, and, and practice your skills at those methods. You also uh, dive into prototyping, ideation techniques, all kinds of methods that you learn a little bit more in detail here already that you could be you could take back to your work and use and and using one of the methods one of the tools from here will even work it doesn't need to follow through the whole process linearly so um you know if you were really grappling with something at work and wanted to try something or test something out with 
uh, people at work, you could take something from this course right away and test it out and it would give you value. So those are the two intro courses, which together take 12 weeks, so six weeks and six weeks for those two courses, as well as the follow-up courses then. So then user research is actually something that um, was originally developed for uh, our UX design certificate program. And uh, uh, we, we can use it here as well. It's part of the service design certificate program as well. Uh, here, you get to understand what uh, tools and methods are used specifically for um, uh, research process, uh, quantitative research tools and, and how to um, uh, pull in qualitative data to better understand where your end users are coming from, what their needs are, how to then connect those data points in a compelling way to insights that will uh, give you something to, to uh, start following in your process uh, and uh, how to incorp incorporate your research into the, it says UX design process here, but service design process as well. And the next course then uh, about developing insights for a design then really follows on that, follows up on that research course and uh, starts to get further into once you have all your great data and there should be lots of it if you've done lots of research, but how do you start to analyze that data? How do you start to see patterns within that data? See what's really meaningful? What are, what are the leads that you should follow? What are the in, insights that, uh, that emerge from there? So um, what are the different mindsets again and the ways that you approach the work through your research process um, uh, and through your analysis and, and synthesis. Um, and there's a, a number of different approaches and frameworks that you learn within this course that are really helpful to that insight developing uh, process and really making those insights really clear and, and easily communicable to your organization and to your colleagues, to the cross-functional team so that everybody can see how the insights become actionable, how the research data becomes meaningful and starts to move the process forward. And then the natural next step and our next course, if you think of these in order, uh, is to then use those insights, all that knowledge and understanding to then start to solution, to start developing ideas for what might work as solutions. So um, different uh, ideation techniques that are a little bit more than just your standard brainstorming. This is about building on top of the evidence that you've gathered, uh, aligning your team uh, against uh, these insights and, and developing ideas from there, and then how to evaluate all those ideas in the beginning you're going for uh quantity but you want to aim for quality then so how do you prioritize between different ideas uh and uh and and then how do you test those ideas because your ideas are still a hypothesis an assumption something that you think that you know by now because you've done research something that you think you understand but then you need to develop it into a prototype or some other form that you can put in front of your audience, in front of your users to test it, to see how they respond to that idea. Uh, and then finally, once you've done that testing, then of course you want to again, communicate it back to all the stakeholders to make sure that they understand how the testing went, what the test results are, what uh, actions you're going to take next from there, where you devise something, where you might have something that you're going to drop because the idea really didn't work that well. Uh, and of course, where you did well and when, where you got a good response from the test users that you want to keep moving those ideas forward. And then leading in service design. Uh, so this is really a... Um, uh, a good course for anyone who is already perhaps in a little bit of a leadership position within design or otherwise, or if you're looking to develop those skills. 
So here you get to learn about how you can analyze the work that's been done, what makes projects successful, um, and how do you engage stakeholders in different kinds of service design projects and initiatives? Um, how do you put together uh, the project goals, the outcomes that the project should shoot for, the deliverables that the project will uh, create in the end? How do you evaluate different team structures to work with, different approaches to projects? Uh, and also, um, broader and bigger than that, how do you communicate the overall value of doing a service design project, of involving service design in a project? So your communication materials for stakeholders, creating a, a, a plan for engaging stakeholders at the right level, at the right frequency, in such a way that you are successful. That's what the focus of this course is. So you can see how we go from an introduction to methodology, to doing research, to uh, analyzing uh, your research, forming insights, and um, uh, prototyping and testing your ideas, and then broader, how do you, uh, how do you evaluate across uh, a set of service design projects and approaches. What about the benefits of completing the service design certificate program? Uh, then, so Kelly spoke already about micro credentials. So um, you get specialized and short term training, something that you can do um, while you're working, uh, doing other things, of course. There's 18 hours per each micro credential. Uh, these courses will uh, help uh, if elevate your competitiveness in the Canadian landscape, global landscape, even as our service design is globally emerging. Um, the instructors come from the field, so myself and my colleagues, other instructors for this course, we all are um, design leaders and design practitioners are ourselves, and so we bring in our experience and expertise and real-world examples into uh, these courses too. The assignments that there are in these courses uh, help you to gain hands-on experience for real-world applicability. So we're not making up things that you couldn't easily see how they apply to real world, but we're using uh, assignments in, this, in these courses in such a way that you can see the connection and you can see how you would use the tools and methods that you use in real work as well. Um, and, uh, and you learn a lot about how to introduce service design to your organization. It being new and it being something that people are asking about but don't necessarily know everything about the hands-on process. You learn a lot in different courses in this program about how to introduce service design to your team and to your organization. All right, I think I'm gonna, Kelly's coming back on stage. Yeah, so we'll, we can we can dive into questions then. Wonderful, thank you, Kari, for providing the overview on the courses and the great reason to take this new uh, certificate program at the School of Continuing Studies. Um, just before we dive into questions, I would like to share that enrollment is currently open for all six of the courses for the winter 2024 term with the first introductory course starting on January 11th, uh, which Kari will be teaching. And you should see on the screen now a link to the service design uh, certificate program through the School of Continuing Studies site. Uh, and you can click there for more information as well. Okay, so at this time, I uh, would like to open up to questions. So uh, please go ahead and, and add your question in the chat box and I will uh, take a, a peek at them and share them uh, so Kari and myself can um, try to provide an answer. Uh, okay, we got a first question here. So the webinar for the first introductory course scheduled from 8 p.m. to 9.30. Does that mean that the time commitment to cross reading and assignments is 1.5 hours per week? Yes, Jennifer, that is correct. When uh, we do quote, or share the, 
the learning would be about three hours per week. That does include, um, it may not be for every week because you may need to spend more time on the course um, during weeks where assignments are due, um, but there is the 1.5 um, hour dedicated to a live webinar, and then there would be um, the requirement of readings and uh, assignments through the six week course. I hope that helps. Yeah, and the way what, what I want to add to that also about the webinars is that the way that we make them work is that there's room for discussion. We engage you through those webinars. We do exercises, different kinds of exercises, activities in each webinar. So it's just it's not just about a talking head and someone taking you through flies, right? There's a little bit of that too, of course, to set things up. But we do a lot of kind of group work there. And so we make it clear that the webinars take 90 minutes, right? Sometimes they may finish a little bit early because we got through the activity a little bit faster than that. So sometimes maybe it's an hour and 15 minutes, but it will never be more than 90 minutes. And that's always clear. And so through a six week course, there are six webinars and they take 90 minutes. Thanks, Kari. The next question, why is there so much time between service design ideation testing and leading with service design courses? Thanks for the question. I think this um, question is referring to the schedule uh, for the winter term. Um, we do like to space the courses out through each term just to allow learners to uh, take, you know, some learners are looking to take two or three of the courses in one term. Um, so that is the reason reason for the scheduling. It, it is that we do space out the, the courses over the, the four months in the term. Where were the two above courses? Oh, um, you know, with regards to, we have a question that there there was some courses offered this term that, that end up not running. And um, we have just recently launched this certificate program out to uh, to the to the market. And sometimes it does take uh, some time to get information out to the market about this, the, the new programs. Um, so, you know, we have to consider the enrollments for courses. And um, as these courses, there's more information shared about them, uh, more enrollments will happen. And the, the plan is to continue to run them every term and, and not have to cancel them. And I think we have a question here, Kari, about taking the two introductory courses back to back in the winter term. Do you see that being possible? Yeah, I think it's certainly possible. And, and uh, I, I think a great thing about um, the courses is that you can kind of set the schedule for yourself a little bit, uh, seeing how much you can fit into your, your plans and your program. And so generally, I definitely say that taking those two introductory courses back to back very quickly is possible. Uh, whether we have it timed so that it's always going to be uh, easy to sign up that way, um, I can't tell you for sure. There are six week courses and uh, Kelly can probably add to this um, how long is the winter, winter term. So I think it's technically possible at least we can you know, have those courses be there so that if the first intro course starts in January, like it will now the, the next run of it, then you know, the second intro course could be kind of after that so that you can sign up for both of them. I can speak from the experience of having many, many uh, um, learners through the UX design courses in the past and now with the service design program starting up, you know, some people are very comfortable with taking themselves through kind of like an accelerated schedule and even getting through, you know, the, much of the program or the whole program in, in a, a, at a very sort of quick pace. And that may work for you, but also think of how, uh, what other needs there are for your time, of course, and the assignments that are there and stuff. So. So you may want to kind of feel it out to, to, or think it through for yourself and what might actually work for you. Thank you, Kari. Yes, and just to add to that, the two introductory courses, it is possible to take each in the winter term. How we've scheduled it for the winter 2024 term is they are back to back. So um, as soon as the first introductory course ends, 
then the next one will start uh, for, for the next term. And we have another question just around the possibility of taking uh, two, after you take the two intro courses, can we take the other courses concurrently instead of in sequence? And I do think it's possible, but Kari, maybe you can touch on, um, you know, there is, there does seem to be um, an ideal sequence to take these courses, um, but maybe you can just touch on if you, you think it is possible. Yeah, I, I love this question because it, it sort of brings out like something that we always also talk about the service design process that we learn about. So it's not really a linear process where you do step one, step two, step three. So you know, in the process of doing service design, working on a challenge, uh, you'll prototype and test and you'll learn something and then you may need to go back to some research again. So I don't want to set the idea with the course, with the program either too tightly that you have to take these courses in order. You can actually, after the intro courses, you can choose, uh, you know, and, and, and of course, whether you're doing the whole program or just some of the courses, like that is up to you. So you, you have that flexibility and, and you can learn in a different sequence. But there is uh, the ideal sequence too, and we just took you through that because that sort of takes you through the different stages of the process. We always emphasize to people that, you know, you don't start uh, delving into a challenge by thinking of solutions right away before you've made sure that you actually understand the problems at hand, because you have a good understanding of the opportunities that you have for solving something. So um, that's what you have to kind of balance to think about like, do I go into learning about leading service design? Maybe it makes sense to you. Maybe maybe that's the piece that you need. Uh, or do I take time to learn about user research first? Wonderful. Thank you. And then we have a question around the, the pricing structure and if there is a benefit for U of T alumni, so I'll take that one. So the, the price point for these courses are at $5.99 each, and um, there is uh, alumni benefit available through the School of Continuing Studies. So I would encourage you to take a look at the U of T School of Continuing Studies website that has more information uh, about that. And then the next question is, um, Will it be easy for someone who has a marketing background to dive into service design, the service design program? Kari, what do you think about that? Um, when you put it that way, will it be easy or will it, will it be hard, I guess, would be the other option. I, I, I don't know how to answer that, uh, definitely. But, um, you know, I come from a bit of a marketing background, having worked in advertising, having worked for, you know, marketing agencies in the beginning of my career 20, 25 years ago. And, uh, and so, like I said already, it's an interdisciplinary field and uh, I'm sure that there are things, communications, you know, uh, that you can, you could leverage from that marketing background. It's not going to make things harder for you. At least. That's what I can say for sure. Wonderful. And I see that there's another question uh, that we may have missed earlier about mm -hmm. service design working in the context of internal clients. And I love that question as well. Absolutely, yes. Um, definitely this this happens. And, and you know, um, I think often we may talk about sort of customer experience and like, you know, uh, um, services as in services to external clients, customers. Uh, but definitely there's an opportunity and this is being used in many organizations. Banks in Canada are using this. Many other organizations are using service design as a way of solving challenges for their employees and uh, solving challenges for the entire organization uh, within the organization, not just for outside customers or clients. Wonderful. Great. Well, I'm just keeping an eye on the time, and I, I think we're right on the 45 minutes, so we will end it there. Um, but uh, do want to let everyone know that, as mentioned, we will be sharing a recording of this session uh, next week, and um, we'll also include our contact information in that distribution. So if there is any other further questions, please feel free to connect with us. And we'd like to thank everybody for joining today and for your great uh, great questions. And Kari, thank you for um, all your insights as well.
and I will stop the recording now and I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone.